Hi, this is a video response to Ivan Mike 1968's Unbalanced Encounters video. Now, first of all, I think Mike did a great video here. Um, I pretty much agreed with just about everything he said, and I wanted to uh, point that out because that's something, particularly with Dungeons Dragons from 3.0 upwards, but even into the earlier editions, there's a lot to do with balance. Now, when you have too much of that, it basically makes the game spoon-fed when you have an encounter that, for the four characters, leaves them easily able to defeat whatever sort of monster uh, they're, they're coming against with just the exhaustion of some spells and hit points, maybe one of them going unconscious. There's no real danger or fear there. Now, if you jack the encounters up a bit, and I, I always like to do that, makes them tougher and harder, makes the characters have to think instead of just swinging a sword and doing seven points of damage. There isn't much fun in that. It gets repetitive and is one of the worst aspects of D&D. I like that you approach that. I do the same thing. When I'm running a game, there will be hints, there will be rumors, there will be NPCs of higher levels providing information to the players and background bits of information as well to really get over. You do not want to go here. There are things here that will kill and eat you. Now, also, you, you hit it on just slightly. Uh, I'd like to add a bit more to that. If you mentioned to the players early on, first level, there's a red dragon that lives up there. It's up in that cavern. It's been asleep for decades, but the grandparents in the town can recall seeing it fly over and its shadow darken the town. Now, that could be a great bit for the game. You can continue to use that slowly developing it. Now, when you're doing plot lines, you really want to start things here right at the beginning. Have four or five game sessions go by. Don't mention them. Add a little another another little piece. Let it, let some more time go by. Add another piece. And then eventually, you can bring the characters to encounter it. And it doesn't have to be you go up there and fight the dragon in and, and that fashion. Maybe you go up there and the dragon's dead and there's, there's a horde sitting there. Maybe there's a young dragon that's replaced it. Maybe it's a Dracolich now. There, there's all sorts of uh, different aspects you can go there. There could be depraved cultists in a, in a cell there, or a, tri a huge tribe of goblinoids has moved in. There's a lot of different things you can do there. And the same thing for developing a tribe of bugbears down the road, or the area where the trolls go. Now they've heard about them and they've had that scare. Also another thing that, that you, you almost hit on, it's okay if the players lose sometimes. Their party can get beat. You know, you do mention them running away and having and playing intelligently and having that idea. But there's also the times when all that just doesn't come for you and you do lose. You do get beat. Now, not necessarily saying you want a total party killer because that's a bad thing. That is pretty much never going to going to lead to people wanting to come back and play in your game. So definitely something you want to avoid at any time you can without completely destroying the credibility of your game because your credibility has to come first. Without that, everything else is, is irrelevant because we are playing make-believe. So credibility is the only thing that's going to allow for suspension of disbelief. Now, when you, you, you build those plot lines and, and you paint your world and explain where the monsters and, and the interesting items are in your game, the, the, the ruins and such, and the players go there and they start experiencing, it's okay if they, they get a little over their heads. I had a, a party, first and second level characters, in the last Forgotten Realms game I ran, they were designed to lose an encounter the way I had scripted things against a troll. Well, I use a critical hit table, and one of the players delivers after they've been fighting the troll for a while, and he was playing a hex blade, had cursed the troll, and everything was working out real well. He delivers a crit for 44 points of damage to the troll. Well, that that was that. Uh, you know, that was the encounter they ended up winning, which I, I had not expected. Uh, some first and second level characters to be able to do, and and they were they were just badly beaten at that point. There were only two of them still conscious out of six players. Uh, one of the NPCs that was with them had been eaten. The other one had to run away in horror. And the way the it came across, the players were also very scared because a troll, which they didn't know had uh, I think a level of ranger in addition, it was very very horrifying to a group of, of first level uh, characters and and their players even more so. Uh, and really describing the, the vivid details of that. And every once in a while, luck can have a huge factor in, in, in changing things around. But 
other times in a game, you know, you'll you'll design things to have have the characters lose. It's really great to knock down the egos of the players a little bit, so your game doesn't look like Hercules or Legendary Journeys, where any foe put in front of your characters is just almost hand waved. Why even bother rolling it? Uh, it's so easy. Make things tough, interesting, spicy, and they're going to going to actually think about it. If they can wade through with their swords, why bother? Diplomacy with the Kobolds, but if they know half of them might get killed, kidnapped, uh, might have really bad things happen to them, they're probably going to think about other tactics. So, I think that think that that's really good points that you made there, Mike. And uh, particularly onto the topic of high level NPCs, I like to introduce high level NPCs, clerics, wizards. I think these are very interesting uh, individuals to introduce into a game and incorporate. And when you use them. You know, the players, as players do, gain levels, you know, slowly can even come up to the level or even surpass some of the characters that were previously mentors or it's positively aligned. I don't like any NPC that's there to help the party. Try to avoid those. They are very easy to see through. NPCs should, like real people, have their own motivations. If you want an NPC to help the party, put their motivations similar to where you think the NPCs the PC's motivations are going to be, and then make 20 other NPCs and have them with different sorts of motivations. So if the, the PCs go in a different direction, they may end up finding other NPCs and, and developing relationships like that. Don't try to force a certain NPC down their throat, as they might not get with that NPC. So just let them sort, sort, sort of find who they want to get in those relationships with. And of course, then there's the, the trade-off the NPC. The PC's having to do something for that NPC, thus you have your D&D quest, you have your adventures, you have your various plots slung together. So I really like what Mike talked here about the unbalanced encounters. I think the encounter system for 3.5 is too low. I always throw more against my players. Sometimes uh, they will be shocked at the amount that comes out against them. Uh, sometimes they lose. But there's a lot of ways you can have players lose without having a total party kill, without having even anyone lose their characters. And it adds that amount of realism. These are real monsters. You are in a real dangerous situation. You need to be careful where you where you pitch your camp. You need to pay attention to the local lore. Go in the tavern. Talk to people. Go talk to the farmers, uh, which Mike mentioned. These sort of hints should be very important. The players should be seeking these things out. It helps make your world feel more alive, and that is really what all role-playing games need to come down to. Make them come as close as they can to believing in, in what you're doing as a game master, and they're going to... the players characters are going to come alive in their imaginations and they're they're really going to give with you in building the suspense of disbelief. So I for one completely agree with you Mike and I definitely endorse this video. Good job.